I'll go ahead and click the start button. Kind of pull the mesh away from the skin a little bit in the front. And any areas where you see any intersection, you can always just pull it away. So we'll end sim, we'll subdivide it, if I want, uh, if it looks a little bit too symmetrical here, I can just restart it again. In sim. Again, I can subdivide to smooth it out just a bit. Cloth thickness comes into play whenever you are committing it to a layer. So I'll create a brand new layer. I'll give it some resolution. And all I have to do now is just hit the Enter key. step out of the cloth tool. We have a few areas that we may have to clean up a little bit, but overall it did a fairly good job. Let's turn the pants back on. We can use either the pose tool or the move tool to tuck the shirt back in and then just hold the control key with the move tool and it will pull the garment along the normals so you can kind of make it bulge just above the belt line. You can go in now and sculpt your seams and add some stitching if necessary. Let's now go ahead and create our collar. So let's go to the retopo room, hide the shirt, let's unhide the collar. Now, if I wanted, I could use the shell tool here to create some thickness before we go into the sculpt workspace. But let me go ahead and I'll select all these faces, transform. I'm just going to scale that out. Okay, and I'll hit escape. Use the brush tool. Finesse it just a little bit. Let's go into the scope room. I'll just create a new layer here. Color. Give it plenty of resolution. Retouple mesh, sculpt mesh. Thicken. Subdivide. Turn the wireframe on. And if I hit apply, you can see how it creates some curvature. I may not want that. Uh, it just depends. In this case, I don't. I'll step out of that tool. I'm going to just clear that from the layer, leave the layer intact. But go back to the retopo room. Escape. So what I want to do is subdivide the mesh.
And now, again, on top of mesh, just go mesh. I created a child layer. Thicken. Subdivide. Apply. Apply. Turn wireframe off. I will ghost it so that I cannot work on it, but I can see it at least somewhat transparently. The color. I'm scroll down to the adjust section. Select the move tool. I'm now going to unghost the shirt layer and then change the shader to something more cloth like. And resume nudging the shirt with the move tool. Again, if you want to pull it along the normals, hold down the control key, otherwise, the tool will work in screen space. We're now going to move on to the cleaning up stage after having used the cloth tool. Now I'll switch to a shader that allows me to see the edits that we're going to make a little bit easier. Once we're done cleaning up, I'm going to create some seams as well. Right now I'm using a primitive, as you can see, a cylinder object to line it up and use it as a cutting object. So I use the subtract mode to do that. In other words, when I select subtract in the tool options panel and then hit the apply button or the enter key, then it's going to actually cut out using that object or that primitive. So I'm using the fill tool here as well as holding down the shift key to smooth at times and I switch to the pinch brush in voxel mode because it does a little bit of smoothing and pinching at the same time and it's a bit different than using the pinch tool in surface mode alright I skip forward just a little bit after some further tweaking and before I go any further I want to show how you can use the pinch brush or crease clay in order to create some nice seams on your cloth. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's turn symmetry on and I can scroll to the pinch brush. A couple different ways that we could do this. We could use a brush and maybe turn on steady stroke or we could apply a spline stroke and I may just go ahead and do that. So I'll click my first point here and it's going to utilize your brush radius for the width. Once I create all my spline points, I can later go back and change them, use brush radius for all points if I want. And it's going to stick to the surface so we probably want to apply more nodes than we might normally. In other words, if we were working on a flat surface we might not need nearly as many nodes but in order for this to keep from going beneath the surface we want to apply a few more nodes hit escape to drop the initial creation of the spline and then I can always go back and hover over the point when it's highlighted blue like that you can edit that point you can move it around if you like by clicking and dragging if you want to add a point you hover over the line and when you see a green highlight you can click to add a point if you need if you want to delete a point you hover over it and hit the delete key 
in this case I may want to choose closed spline and the difference between that and the closed spline in the e-panel is that the closed spline in the e-panel basically applies it to everything inside the circle whereas this applies it along this spline and then you can change uh, the different types here. Let's choose B splines. That will give us a smoother result. If you need to add a hard point, you can just hover over any given point, even while you're creating the spline. And you can just right click and it will change the point type for that particular point. So right click again, and it's going to be a hard edge. Right click once more and it's going to toggle back to B spline. So you've got three different point types. I think we'll go with that just for purposes of demonstration. Now the pinch brush is a pretty powerful little tool because it doesn't just pinch, it actually creates an indent or a crease depending on whether or not you invert the tool or leave it at its default. I'll choose a brush alpha that has a sharp fall off and it's going to apply this along the stroke. Again, it's going to indent by default. However, if you reduce your depth value, it's only going to pinch. In this case, we do want it to indent somewhat. I'm going to scale my brush to the size that I think I'm going to want to use for the entire stroke. And then I'll go to this little toggle and I'll choose use brush radius for all points. Let's add a point right there. Okay, maybe one there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a try. And all I have to do is hit the Enter key, or in this little toggle, I can choose Apply. I can see on the opposite side with Symmetry on, the effect without actually having to drop the, the spline. And I can also save this for later usage if I want. That may be a good thing to practice even if you don't think you're going to need it now. You might later on. Okay, so I'll hit escape. We have another option that will subdivide as it's doing this and that is crease clay. I'm going to turn symmetry off because we push some of the cloth around it's not perfectly symmetrical so steady stroke and let's try crease clay just to demonstrate it so I'm going to just go ahead and brush and you can see what it's doing let's turn wireframe on if I zoom in you can see it applies dynamic tessellation in this area and I'm going to bring my depth value down and when you reduce your brush size when using live clay tools it's actually going to tessellate more so the larger your brush the less it's going to tessellate and detail if you need to use a large brush this is probably where you would want to crank that up Let's turn her smoothing up a bit. You could also adjust the strength here as well. So you can see that's really dense. Let's turn wireframe off. However, we don't really need crease clay for this purpose because again the pinch tool is probably what you're going to want to use first because you're not having to subdivide and you may want to check your strength level for pinching because otherwise if it's at zero all it's going to do is indent Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'll turn wireframe on. We don't really need tessellation with a mesh that's already this dense. So I'll undo 
Turn wireframe off. I'm going to turn steady stroke up a bit more. And we'll smooth that little area right there. Undo. Again, if I want a deeper indent, I just increase the depth level, right click and drag up. So I'll quickly do that over here as well. 